Hi, everybody. Now that we know how to do loops and we know how to do some rolls, let's go ahead and do ourselves a half cube and eight in a stock Piper J3 cub. A half cube and eight is five eighths of a loop, followed by a half roll so the airplane winds up going the opposite direction it came, upright relative to the horizon. Because we're combining loops, maneuvers that increase our G loading, with rolls, now is a good time to take a look at why we want to avoid rolling G. Let's start with the gross oversimplification, then let's delve into a little detail on the subject, and finally, we'll return to some practical rules of thumb. So let's imagine we're flying a plane made out of jello jigglers. This will help us visualize some of the stresses on the plane. In real life, our planes aren't going to bend like this unless we're having a really bad day. When we just pull the nose up with the elevator, we stress the wings in a kind of bendy, uppy-downy way like this. The ailerons are attached to the wings trailing edge only. So when we roll with ailerons, the ailerons are also trying to twist the wings. When we combine rolling with pulling, we're combining the bendy stresses from G-loading with the twisty stresses from fully deployed ailerons. This can lead to locally excessive stresses that cause structural failure, even though the total G-loading on the plane has not been exceeded. So now let's take a look at what's happening back at the airplane's tail. The empennage has aerodynamic surfaces just like the wings. And just like the wings, the empennage has its own roll dampening. That means the pro-roll forces sent from the wings get resisted by the empennage, and that leads to twisty forces or torsion in the rear fuselage. The elevators put aerodynamic forces on the airplane's tail, and that's what pitches us around our lateral axis. So once again, we're combining bending and twisting stress on airplane parts. Just like before, this can lead to structural damage below published limits. As you watch this spinning T-handle in space, you can imagine our plane is that T-handle. The tendency to swap ends is due to inertial coupling. These forces are increased by the way the plane is loaded and its roll rate. They're resisted by the airplane surfaces. So when we start deploying a lot of elevator at a high roll rate, we're also adding the forces of the plane's roll coupling to its other combined loads. In the cub, our roll rate's very slow, but I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't introduce roll coupling. Who knows what you'll be flying next week? So what does this mean, practically speaking? Well, it means that our plane's integrity is reduced by one-third if we're rolling and pulling at the same time. That means that our limit load comes very close to our failure load. So avoid rolling and pulling G at the same time. If you catch yourself in a nose-low, speed-increasing situation, resist the urge to pull and roll at the same time. Remember the sequential recovery you've been taught. Power off, roll level, then pull. Graduates of certain upset courses may have a slightly different sequence teed up in their minds, but all of us silently brief our escape paths from potential surprises. This is not much different from a takeoff or approach to landing, really. With all that said, let's take a look at how to fly this maneuver in the J3 Cub. We'll walk through it in slow motion, and like a lot of maneuvers, we're going to start between 100 and 110 miles per hour. Eyes to the wingtips so we can keep straight as we pull into a normal old 3G loop. As the nose touches the horizon, we start our half roll back to upright. If, like the picture, we wait until we're 45 below the horizon to start our roll, it works out okay, but we'll be recovering from a vertical downline. For the sake of oil pressure, let the nose fall ballistically as you roll. Now let's take a look at the same half cuban at normal speed. As you can see, it goes pretty slowly, and there's plenty of time to take in observations. So that's my little video on half cube and eights. If you want to do a full cube and eight, you just do two of these one after the other. Hope you all had fun. I'll talk to you next time.